We interrupt our regularly scheduled program to bring you fun with black tanks. So a couple stops back, I noticed that I could not get my valve on my black tank completely closed. I wanna say it probably looks a little something like that inside. So what's happening is when I arrive somewhere and you've got the cap that goes on the end where you connect your hose, pop that cap off and it's full of liquid that you don't like. So what's happened is, is that has seeped past this point down to the bottom. That's the first problem. The second problem is you normally keep your black tank closed until you're ready to dump it and flush it because otherwise you get what's called a mountain or pyramid of toilet paper and other solid wastes. You need liquids to stay in there to help things properly break down as well as to flush out nice and neat when it's done. So if you've got whatever level of opening I've got on that valve for the black tank and it's letting the liquid leak out, even so we're parked here full time. I only flush and dump the black tank once a week. But if there's hardly any fluid left, it's just been slowly trickling out all week. Well, I'm kind of left in a bad situation. So to help me make sure that I could get my black tank properly cleaned when this was getting stuck a little bit because I didn't know how to fix this yet. I added on a second gate which goes on the bottom between the hose. I've got a, a piece that plugs in that I can hook a hose to so I can do a flush which I'm doing right now and then I added another gate below that so that the water can fill in there and stay in there and really fill up that tank. So my goal was to get the water in the black tank to go as high up as possible into the toilet area. First thing to get through, spray foam. There's gray spray foam. This gray spray foam was sealed all around like the handles, as well as the entire port that you can hook the hose onto. First thing I had to do was break that away. Then there's a plastic liner along the bottom. My only piece I got is kind of dirty. I won't show that to you now. That I thought I had to unscrew. So there was these little heads of screws or nuts or bolts, bolts, that went into this plastic with a washer that then held the plastic to the frame that's kind of held the insulation or whatever is exposed between the two frames down there. I didn't have anything that was quarter inch size, so I went to Ace Hardware and got a quarter inch wrench. It's really small. And I untwisted that for a long time, only to discover that's not going anywhere. It's literally not coming down. So I finally started to cut the plastic away. I cut about a rectangle shape away so I could expose the black tank valve. Of course, I was had a lot of liquid coming down and that's when I discovered that liquid was coming from somewhere else. And oh, it's real fun when you lose control of it and it flaps and flings water all over your face. So you don't know where that water came from exactly. Yeah, I immediately got up and sprayed my face down with the outdoor shower because no thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Rinse that mess off. Ace Hardware had one of these in stock. So I went ahead, went back to Ace Hardware and got this along with some 7 16 sockets and a 7 16 wrench because it's gonna have a nut on one side and a bolt on the other side as well as the one that's down there that's gotta come off. But I thought, you know, hey, I bet you people on YouTube would like to see what this looks like. Nice and clean. Now I did notice that if it comes all the way out, it struggles a little bit sometimes to push back in. And it has these two rubber gaskets. Make sure you don't lose those because those are your gaskets that help make sure you have a good seal between your two sewer pipes on both sides to keep stuff in. There's also some kind of a gel around here. The gel is probably helping to make sure that nothing is seeping through and out there as well. And this is from, this is from Bristol. It says it's made in the USA. Now, obviously before taking this apart, I'm trying to make sure that anything in that black tank is as clean as possible. It's been getting a lot of extra flushing today. Just to make sure that, you know, I realize the water still isn't sanitary, but I'd still rather it be unsanitary water as opposed to something else. Don't question it. 
Just do it. Greetings from the future. I have come to warn you, do not use Vaseline on the gaskets for the black tank valves. It is highly recommended to use instead KY jelly or a other silicone lubricant. It has come to my attention that the Vaseline can actually eat away the rubber. How scary. I felt that you needed to know this, so I have come from the future to inform you. <laughs> That's right. I got the new black tank valve put in yesterday and it leaked. Problem was the seals that come with it, seals or gaskets, it's really hard to get those in place. Everything is very tight. I saw in a number of places the recommendation to use Vaseline. Well, I got it all together, tight as possible with the bolts and the nuts, and it leaked with water. It was end of the night, not a lot I could do. Basically what we did was we left the black tank open and only put liquids in it. I said no solids of any kind until this is done. So, and then I had a little pan down there that uh, it's the tub, black tub with the yellow handles and lid. I use that for black tank accessories, so I'm used to that one being on sanitary. So that one sat down there and caught any drips last night, and then I poured them into another empty hole this morning, empty uh, sewer hole. I went to the store when I woke up this morning and I bought some Vaseline. So what I did was I took it all apart, took it back out. I could see where the sealer gasket was kind of getting pushed or it, it had gotten kind of wrinkled in there. That's probably what the leak was where the leak was occurring. I cleaned it all up, dried it all completely, and then I coated each seal completely with Vaseline, and I put them not on the valve, but on each end of the pipes, the sewer pipes. And so the Vaseline actually helped it to stay on there, as well as give it a little bit of lubrication as it was going on. But I was able to get everything back in there. I did have a little bit of scare at one point. I had loosened a hose clamp that goes around the black tank where it sticks out. So there's a pipe that sticks into the black tank. The pipes are rigid, they're very hard. The black tank is somewhat flexible. It has a little bend to it. it had loosened that hose gasket, the screwdriver, and tighten it down. <laughs> so I was working on putting everything together and that pipe came out of the black tank. And I was like, oh, oh no. So I quickly got that pipe shoved back in there, got that all sealed down. Everything's good there. Eventually I was able to get the valve with all the gaskets put back in place. I kind of took turns going around, tightening down the nuts and bolts. And then we started water testing and we're good. We did our first round of water testing. We shot water up from the hose, what we used to flush it. Yesterday that yielded a lot of leaking. No leaking there. So then I closed off the valve. Tanya stayed out here and watched and I went up into the bathroom, held my foot on the toilet for a couple of minutes. We had no leaking, so we're good. The only downside is all that plastic that they had used to put under there, a lot of that I have cut. We're good for living in it again, but I need to take some, some efforts. I'm gonna probably try using Gorilla Tape to tape those plastic pieces back up there until we can come to a better, more permanent solution. The tools that got used the most for this job those were completely covered with a spray foam insulation, which had to be removed, and then the plastic, which I thought was screwed in place, but was actually more of riveted in place, so I had to use scissors to cut that away. Used a flathead screwdriver for that hose clamp that held the pipe onto the black tank. Used a 3 8 wrench, and I like these little ratcheting ends, those are pretty awesome. There is a propane line that is mounted right above where you pull the gray tank. The hoses, they were split right there and it was prohibiting me from moving the pipe around a lot. It's kind of holding the pipe up, the sewer pipe from the gray side. So I used a 3 8 to remove those screws and let that hose hang down and give me the slack I needed. And then my two biggest workhorses, 7 16 this is what I had used to remove the old valve and to put the new valve on. This was a real trying time for us because we are at a small RV park that has no bathhouses. So this put us in a real pinch. So it was kind of like wake up in the morning, get everybody in, use the bathroom, get out, start flushing it. Kept checking with the girls. You're not using the bathroom, right? Right. And then we've got memberships to a rec center nearby here. So I made sure that Tanya was ready to run whoever needed to go real bad over to the rec center to use their bathrooms. So in the end, I would say what caused the biggest headache here was that someone in our family had put a large amount of hair 
down the toilet. That large amount of hair had gotten jammed into the old valve, preventing the old valve from closing. Don't flush hair down the toilet. The only thing that should be going down your RV toilet, or really any toilet, toilet paper, solid waste, and liquids. You know, you know what liquids I'm talking about. Including water, of course. Sorry for this nasty episode, but I hope that this helps somebody out there to be better prepared to deal with RV black tank maintenance. Our summer of fun has come to an end, and it is time to head from Meeker back down to Texas. After a quick stop at Walmart and Rifle, we headed east on I-70 through some of the most scenic and beautiful canyons, the river area that we've ever seen. I'm honestly excited to be able to drive back through there again. It is a bit of a dangerous area as they've had some mudslides actually cover up Interstate 70. So make sure to be checking the particular websites, let's see if I can find it for y'all and put a link up above for how you can check to see if the Colorado highways are having an issue like a mudslide covering the interstate. From there, it was a little bit difficult to try to pick a path that was shorter. I didn't want to go all the way into Denver to catch a highway down south. So we actually did take a pass that took us down through Buena Vista, Colorado. We made our way over to the KOA in Pueblo for our first night while traveling back. It was a decent park. The bathrooms and showers were all right. The playground was pretty dated. It was there, you can play on it. You kids may still have some fun with it. That's pretty cool. If you like the older playgrounds, it is neat that they still have it. We went down through the Raton Pass and then over through New Mexico. I was very pleased to see that the highway that you take from Raton over to Dalhart, Texas, they've actually expanded the entire highway in New Mexico to a four lane highway. The last time I'd passed through there was 2007 and it was two lane the whole way and that was a real pain. So what do you call this face? face. Silly face. Got down to Amarillo. We stayed at a giant RV park. So this giant RV park is near the Cadillac Ranch is it called where the cars are all sticking up out of the dirt. Well they put an RV sticking up out of the dirt right by where you check into this RV park. Very cool looking. The RV park was pretty decent. A lot of pull through sites. That was nice. The pool area was decent. They had a hot tub. They had an adults only hot tub area that was completely separated from the family area. However, the hot tub was broken. That's a no bueno by me. But this RV park also had a fitness center and it had a laundry room. All of that was pretty well taken care of, pretty decent. The RV park had a really big park store as well as like a clubhouse. Huge couch where you could watch TV, play area with toys for the kids. Seemed like something to enjoy if you're out there for a long, month long stay, which they do have available. After our stay in Amarillo for one night, we headed down to Abilene where we hit up another KOA. They had a pretty decent swimming pool that was right amongst the trees as well as a playground area. We really liked this park, it was nice. And this KOA does have monthly rates. Showers were decent, had some cool cabins. The only thing though that bothered me was there was an area I watched a toy hauler pull into and it snagged a tree with its air conditioner. We had a blast at the pool. In fact, we didn't want to leave it and everybody was getting hungry. So we actually called and had a pizza delivered right to the swimming pool. They had a little picnic table area right by the office that had some things like a big game of Connect Four. Fun little things to do to keep you busy. So after our one night stay in Abilene, it was back to the house in Seguin, Texas. Yes, that is where our home base was, is. Okay, it's time to get rid of the house. 
everybody was very motivated after this trip. We had a blast. This two months, a two month summer of fun trip was a test run to see if we really did want to live full time in an RV. And it was a success. Everyone had a blast and the destinations we went to, the biggest hurdle to get over was the fact that our RV was a little small for living in full time. So we're gonna be dealing with that next time. So keep on watching to see what we pick out for our next RV. <laughs> So it doesn't have a stove, but it has the barbecue. That's cool.